Hello and welcome, I'm Raziel and so it's back to normal it's with a brand new series of how to improve or make better I don't know, I kind of just say you know, make them great again because, you know, a lot of lore and stuff like that of all the games of all wargaming tends to be interesting but eh, sometimes a little bit flawed but as if you've not watched this one or you forgot there are particular rules with these videos that is i'm not allowed to go outside of the law i'm not allowed to add anything that's not been mentioned before and it's something that's going to you know actually improve said character faction etc etc or even species which is what we're talking about today now here's the thing okay species a uh, bit of a hard sell interdimensional beings we're i don't know right because there's a lot of wargaming there's a lot of war games there is so many but you can find almost anything anywhere and you will enjoy a model of at least one anyway the thing i'm talking about today is gods gods of wargaming this to me is one of the most interesting aspect of wargaming law I am not mentioning Lord of the Rings in this one, even though, yes, it has gods. But if you look at some old interviews of Tolkien, the actual good guy's god is the Abrahamic god, the Christian god. Okay? And it's really interesting. This guy was a good Christian. And he, you know, he made some really interesting... Uh, read, read some of his letters to C.S. Lewis. Yeah, those who are really good. Just write their theology. It's fantastic. Anyway... Back to the point in hand, and we are talking about gods, and let's start. See, as I said, gods have this interesting part in wargaming lore. It's kind of part of it, and kind of not. We are told they are real, and though they are rarely seen, some are seen. And some are not seen, some are believed to be gods, while they're not gods. Others are gods, and not believed to be gods, and some are gods who just like to mess around and have a good old giggle at everyone else's expense you know such as Chikagorak of the Harlequins yep he is a fun god so how would you improve the gods see this is really weird because you can't really do too much to improve gods themselves because here's the thing the problem with gods is that if you make them too interactive with their said law it kind of diminishes what they are. If you have ever read the book, the Skaven book at the end times, you will see that, yeah, it kind of decreased the, shed, the actual Great Horned Rad because he entered the real, the actual old world and, you know, made himself known. But he was also quite small, so it took a lot of his mystique away. And when Corn is apparently allowed to walk it, he overcomes planets. He his head's in the skies, and he's like feet of size of mountains. It's just enormous and stupidly big. But that's kind of thing you would expect the size that you expect a god to be. You wouldn't expect him to be something that could fit into a room that fits twelve rats. Anyway, so here's the thing. So how do you integrate gods into the law? A little bit better or a little bit more interesting and the way to do this is to actually have avatars avatars are obviously an interpretation of said god made real or you know someone who has the power of a god and is preaching out the god's word it's you know, it's the avatar and we have some really good interesting interesting ones of this of course we cannot go without the avatar of Cain uh, for real die um, not bringing in the bloodthirst or any greater demons because they are not avatars, they are greater demons. Completely different. And for conquest, you have Hephaestus, the fallen divinity. For two of them, the fallen divinity is such a lovely model. Yeah, I do like that model. It's so cool. I'm really going to get one if I ever do an old Dominion army. I might just get one just because. It is quite expensive, but that's the problem. Anyway, but the fact is, there's so many gods and so few avatars there's very few avatars like i said it's really chaos no none of the chaos gods actually have an avatar you have the four main chaos gods they have many demons and champions they don't really have an avatar you can always state like Ka or uh, khan 
um, not Fulgham, the other guy, Lucius, Typhus, and Araman may be the avatars, but they're not really. I mean, they do what they do. Araman definitely not, because he, yeah, he's powered up by Zinch, but he doesn't like Zinch. No one who follows Zinch likes Zinch. No one, Chaos God likes Zinch either. Anyway, but, point being, yeah, they don't actually have any real avatars. It would be interesting to see some Chaos avatars come out for 40k. I don't really speak about 40k, but this is a uh, part of it. And the same with Ear. Like, the old Dominion has the fantastic Fallen Divinity as an avatar, but I do spires, and I would like to see something that represents their gods. Uh, or with the city-states, they have the Hephaestus as well, you know, basically Greek god, but I would like to see some of the Sorcerer's Kings. Up. I might be wrong on that one, though. Sorcerer Kings, or the Radron, which, okay, they're orcs that ride dinosaurs, and the same with the Nords. I would like to see their gods kind of represented as uh, with avatars upon the field. It was, these, are really, these are usually very cool models. And just so people don't lose their heads, an avatar is something called an avatar and it's actually a depiction of said god, which is why the avatar gain even, gain, even though it is a demon, it is actually an avatar, so it's a representation of a god. A bloodthirster, bloodthirster, ta -ta. a bloodthirster is not a avatar because it has not a, dep a, disp a depiction, disp a likeness of. Cool. Anyway, back to the point. So, we have that absolutely fantastic thing. And the thing is, Kings of War doesn't really have anything like this. Kings of War would be one of those that would really, really benefit, given the amount of gods they have. They start the whole story with gods, and how they're two pairs, and one of them is a pair of twins, and constantly chasing the other, which is why you get Night and Duck, Night and Duck. And, you know, one that is joyful and happy because they're the god of life, and you have the god of death, who's just a miserable sod. But it would be interesting to see these gods' avatars played out in the field and in the lore and how they can kind of change things. And that's the other thing about gods in this, in the lore. In the Beast. Very rarely do they actually have a proper impact on the lore. I mean, they rarely do. They're always sort of side characters or they're having their own battles. The only real god I know that has a actual sorry, that's my phone, actual real impact on the law is the god of the old dominion because she biffed it. And when she biffed it, all her followers biffed it. And when they all biffed it, they prayed back to life and it's a weird ass story. And it's rather worth reading. Check it out. But yeah, basically that's the only real impact these gods have on the planets. Corn really doesn't do much, he just kind of yowls. Um but Again, actually seeing the gods do a bit more on, you know, the planets, not just sending out demons or anything like that, would be interesting in the laws in the law as well. Anyway, that's my view on how to make the gods better, and I hope you all enjoyed this video. This was fun to make and read about, and thank you. I'll see you on the next one, and of course, if you wish to save money on Wayland Games, I will... You do get free delivery off the £20, and up to 20% off your wargaming models and loveliness. Yeah, I, I, I always use them. I'm, like, I'm going to be getting some stuff next week from them. And I'm just trying to consider what? Probably the First Blood box set, which has the Radrun and the Old Dominion. I've almost finished my Spires, so I might go that way next. Just to have something a little bit different to build. But then again, I get no big models. Oh, I could get the source. Never mind, let's finish this up. Forbidden Planets next. And that's for all your cool comic books, geek stuff. I got the Gears of War 2 omnibus there. Um, volume 2, I should say. For, which is a fantastic read if you like to hear the war stories. And yeah, she's there. Uh, that was there. That was fun. Check it out. Check it all out. It's a cool stock shop. There's my merchandise. T-shirts, cups, bags. You know, the usual day what everyone else does. There is my comics. If you want to see Little Red Riding Hood, go ham on some Lovecraftian cyborg werewolves. He's there. Tell me there's no imaginative ideas now. I'd like to see someone come up with an idea like that. Anyway, and there's also a horror anthology, which has a kind of fantasy which I really need to finish. It's about Nox, he's someone who walks the dreams, and it's kind of based on Freddy Krieger, kind of, but he's like a good guy. He changes dreams. Anyway, getting off track. Skyforge, good friend. Let's boost him up the algorithm. And finally, Patreon, because business. Bye-bye.